happy holidays from all your favorite food group friends. The fall and winter holidays bring celebrations, and celebrations bring me food. And family. What makes our union family so special is that we have students who come from all around the globe and have many different cultures. Let's learn more about what some of our union friends are eating this holiday and what they're celebrating. What is your favorite food that you eat during the holidays? Um, candy. Pozole. It's like a kind of soup. Um, there's like a couple Salsa. different kinds. There's um, one that has some meat in it and the other one has s some chicken. There's, there's like this thing that we have that we put in it and like, they're like that small, but we don't know what they're called. Yeah. <laughs> and it just tastes really good. Yeah, it does. Pozole is a traditional soup or stew from Mexican cuisine. There are red, white, and green variations, but it's usually made with cooked hominy, which is dried corns, kernels, and a broth, and either pork or chicken. Then come all the delicious extras that can be added in, like onion, cabbage, avocado, limes, oregano, and chiles. She makes egg rolls. She makes egg rolls? What are in her egg rolls? So it's vegetables, like carrots, you know, veg like um, ca cabbage and like all the greens. I took a big bite. You take a big bite of those egg rolls? Yeah. Egg rolls make a delicious addition to any holiday celebration and they can be filled with a wide variety of meats and tons of vegetables. Our own union chef, Mike Yip, is a pro at egg rolling. And don't blink or you'll miss seeing his secret ingredient, peanut butter. Wait, what? Dia de los Muertos, or Day of the Dead, is a multi-day Mexican holiday usually running from October 31st to November 2nd. It is a celebration and opportunity to gather with family and friends to pray and remember those that have passed. During the festivities, families prepare favorite foods and drinks of those that have died, and tamales are one of the most common dishes to eat during these celebrations. You can add spices in it. You can you can make like sweet ones. I normally um, like the spicy ones probably better. He doesn't like tamales. What is your favorite dessert that you eat during the holidays? Mm, cookies. Cookies. And what holiday do you like to eat cookies at? Day of the Dead and Christmas. Do you decorate the cookies in a special way for Day of the Dead? Mm -hmm. What do you, how do you decorate them? We put like a skull or a flower. Sweet treats that are shaped like skulls and decorated in bright colors are also a favorite treat during this time. All this talk about food is making me hungry. Time to get a plate. Speaking of plate, Dr. Lettuce Seat right here. Now would be a great time to remind everyone that even during the crazy holidays, we want to try to eat from all five food groups at every single meal. P the pozole you mentioned had chicken in it, and chicken is in the protein group. Turkey is also in the protein group, and turkey is my favorite holiday meal at Thanksgiving. Speaking of turkey, how do you even cook that? <laughs> A bunch of chicken. Roast it, and then he had to take the insides out, yeah. and then like a little bit of vegetables around it. Ew! Put some seasonings on it, roast it in the oven, take it out and put a little bit more and maybe a glaze or something. Fry it, um, I guess put it in the oven, let it cook for a little while, then take it out. What's your favorite piece of the turkey that you like to eat? Turkey like drumstick. We put it in the oven and leave it there for 10 minutes. Oh, we've seen the turkey before, like a, the animal turkey. I think I like put it in the oven for three okay. minutes or, or 10. Wow, well those are some really creative ways to cook a turkey. But as a chef, I always suggest setting the oven at 325 and cooking it for about 15 minutes per pound. Okay, so if I have a five pound turkey, that's five times 15 minutes, which equals 75 minutes. There are 60 minutes in one hour, so the five pound turkey would then need to cook for one hour and 15 minutes? Yes. Cool. So to double check, I'm just gonna touch and then look at it to make sure it looks cooked, right? Not so much. That's always a good idea, but definitely have a thermometer. Oh, I've always got a thermometer. Ladies are always telling me how hot I'm looking. Well, that's great, muscle man, but when it comes to actual meat, always use a food thermometer. 
And you want to check it in the thickest part. Okay. okay. And then make sure it's at 165 degrees. Oh, and that makes sure okay. that it's completely done and no one will get sick. Hey man, did you hear anybody talking about eating the dairy or fruit groups during the holidays? No, I didn't, but you know, we should change that. Hey, can you guys hear me? Make sure when you guys are at home, you remind your parents to add some fruits and vegetables, like me, a banana, or a salad, to your holiday meals to get those extra vitamins and minerals. And with those fruits, you can make a fruit yogurt, a cheese dip, or even a glass of milk. Those are all excellent suggestions. So let's see, we've talked about the protein, dairy, and fruit group, but I bet Wonder Wheat Girl has some suggestions for our grain group. I sure do. Whole wheat rolls and stuffing are some of my favorites. I like the rolls that my Nana makes, they're really good. She like makes the dough and it takes a while to set, so usually she makes it like the day before and then waits till we get there to put them in a pan and cook them. Delicious holiday desserts I also love. And most of them are made of flowers, so they can be in the green group. Okay, okay. Some of them aren't the healthiest, but we do eat some of the woe food sometimes. Let's see what tasty treats our union kiddos like to eat during the holidays. If you have a piece of bread and you get a baby in it, automatically, it says the legend will give you good luck. If you find a baby doll, you have to make a tamale. <gasps> And it has like different kinds of fruit colors on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what holiday do you eat that at? Christmas. Three Kings bread, Rosca de Reyes, or sometimes called Mexican Christmas bread, is a traditional Mexican dessert eaten during the Christmas seasons, but most often on Three Kings Day, which is January 6th, which celebrates the belief of the arrival of wise men to meet baby Jesus. Baby Jesus is represented by a small plastic baby put in the bread. The person that gets the baby and their piece has to bring tamales to the next family celebration. Our family usually makes pie, like pumpkin pie, apple pie, and pecan pie. Christmas jello. Pea pie? Sweet potato pie. Pumpkin pie. Pumpkin? That's my buddy. I also love a good green bean casserole, salad, or mashed potatoes with my holiday meal. But back to pumpkin. With its bright orange radiant colors, like myself, it's packed with a ton of vitamin A. This super vitamin helps keep your eyes uh, super sharp and your skin silky and smooth. Pumpkin fun facts. The largest pumpkin in the world was grown in Germany in 2016. This huge pumpkin weighed 2,624 pounds. That's about 600 pounds heavier than an adult walrus. <laughs> Pumpkins come in many different shapes and sizes, ranging in color from white to green to orange, as we most commonly recognize them. They can be smooth, speckled, or bumpy, and used for so many things. You might have scooped out and roasted the seeds, or carved into one to make an jack-o'-lantern. In Ireland and Scotland, they don't grow many pumpkins, so they make their jack-o'-lanterns out of turnips. Grandma, do you remember that time when... Pumpkins, which are native to North America, have been around since at least 5,500 BC. They are members of the squash family and are now grown around the world on every continent, except Antarctica. The U.S. produces about 1.5 billion pounds of pumpkins per year. While pumpkins were most likely present at the first Thanksgiving in 1621, you would not have seen any pumpkin pie. Settlers were still lacking in butter, flour, and more importantly, an oven for baking the tasty dessert we enjoy today. Here is a recipe for a simple, delicious pumpkin treat you can make at home. Wash, wash, wash your hands, fronts and backs and sides. Use warm water, not just cold, don't keep those germs alive. Hey. Hey. Hi guys, it's Quinn and Reese and Gianna. So today for a fun fall snack, we are making pumpkin, pumpkin pie in a bag. bag. So the ingredients you need are vanilla pudding, some pumpkin, some pumpkin pie spice, some cinnamon, some graham crackers, and some milk. So the measuring tools you'll need is some measuring teaspoons and stuff, like a two-thirds of a cup for liquid, some plastic cups, and a cup. So first we'll need a small baggie 
and we're gonna need a graham cracker and we're gonna need to seal it up tight. Make sure all of the air is out of it and now we're gonna need to crush it. Let's go. So now you'll need your cup, your plastic cup, and then you're gonna need to pour your graham cracker into your cup. And now, let's set that aside. So now, our next ingredient is uh, the milk and the vanilla pudding. So you need four tablespoons, but we already measured that out. But here is a tablespoon. Right here, it says on there. So we'll need the gallon bag and you'll need two thirds of a cup. So you'll need to get down to eye level so that you can really see and not get We're going to need the gallon bag so I can pour that in. And then open it up and then we're gonna pour that in there. And now we'll need the pillow. So Deanna, will you do that? And then next is the fun part. We get to mix it, mix it. So now that you've mixed for a minute, it's gonna feel more like pudding because you just added pudding. Or so like slime. Gianna, you hold that. And then the next ingredient that you'll need is the pumpkin. So Reese, will you show them what pumpkin is? It's very orange. It's very orange like my shirt. I'm gonna taste it and say what it tastes like. Well, it might not taste as good as pumpkin pie because you haven't added the spice yet. So now we'll need to add it. So you'll need one cup. This is one cup and add it to the bag. So now let's pour it in. Now we're going to need to add the pumpkin pie spice. So once you've added that, you are going to need to add the cinnamon. So you'll need one fourth a teaspoon. So now you're gonna mix it again. Oh, look how it changed colors. So once you're done, you're going to lay it flat, spread it all the way up, and then you're gonna scoot it to one corner, it doesn't really matter. Then you need to get a pair of clean scissors because you don't want yucky ones because then it will change the food taste. And you're gonna to need to scoot it back a little bit, get our cups back out, and then you're going to need to grab it very carefully and you're going to squirt it into there. Okay. And then for a fun extra part, and if you don't like this, it's okay. But whipped use cream. Whipped cream. So you're gonna need to give it a little shake. And then to use it, you just need to push down really hard and point it down. And then next comes the fun part, time to eat. Wait, Quinn, when our mom's not looking, I like to do this. Okay, so now it's time to eat. Isn't it yummy? Yeah. Yeah. After a filling holiday meal, most of us want to take a nap. Hey Dairy Fairy, wake up. And when the weather is just right, we can go outside and go for a walk or even have a dance party. 
Thanks for tagging along on this holiday food adventure. We hope you had fun listening to our fun activities and recipes. Make sure to try them out at home, and we hope you have a great holiday. See you soon!